Libraries of Hope is just what its name implies. It's libraries of books, fine art, music, and other resources to inspire the hearts of young people with hope. Hope for better things is what keeps us moving forward and reaching higher. Our world doesn't seem to be offering much hope these days. I hear from mothers all the time who tell me they no longer feel comfortable allowing their children to bring books home from their public library. They're shocked at what even their youngest children are being exposed to. The classics are vanishing from the bookshelves. The history selections for children are growing smaller. It's almost impossible to find books that reflect faith, family, and freedom, and that inspire the heart with goodness, love, and beauty. In many libraries, the books are being removed altogether and are being replaced with computer screens. What I have tried to do is give you another choice, another library you can turn to. The Central Library is an online library here at librariesofhope.com. Most of the books offered here are free and can be read immediately on electronic devices or printed out. But the intention is that, through the resources you will find here, you will become acquainted with books that you'll want to include in a library of hope in your own home, which is why I call it Libraries of Hope instead of Library of Hope. As these family libraries grow, maybe you'll want to do as other families are doing and turn them into lending libraries for your community of neighbors and friends. As you do this, you are being part of a cultural uplift to our world. So you may be asking how I selected the books in this library. My main intention was to look for living books. If you love Charlotte Mason like I do, living books is a familiar term. You also know the difference between a living book and twaddle. One definition I like is this. Living books are those which have worthy thoughts, inspiring tales, inspiring ideas or pictures of life, and with fit and beautiful expression. Living books help learning come alive and fill us with ideas and ideals, which fulfills the purpose of creating a library that will fill young people with hope. I've spent many years searching for books with which to fill this library. My initial search led me to books written before 1923, books that were in the public domain. Internet Archive had just started digitizing old books and placing them on the Internet for all of us to read. I made note of the books that were being recommended by educators back in their day, and I soon came to find my own personal favorites and organized the library around these very old, wonderful children's books. They didn't hide their reasons for writing the books they did. They definitely had an agenda. They wrote to help children understand how to remain free. They wrote to help children learn how to live happy, fruitful lives. The books are packed full with gems of wisdom. While I provide links to the digitized copies, Internet Archive makes it very easy to push a button and print them out if you prefer paper in hand. In that way, I was able to add many books to my own library, with them costing only a couple of dollars each to print them out. And then I started to learn about children's books written after 1923. I studied the writings and recommendations of May Hill Arbuthnot, starting with her 1947 edition of Children and Books. I dug through hundreds of bins of old books, looking for the treasures to rescue It became a favorite hobby, and my personal library swelled to several thousand books. I was always looking for the best of the best. I poured through book recommendations of fellow book lovers, whose opinions I came to value and trust. People like Elizabeth Wilson and her books Children Love, Lisa Ripperton and her monumental work at the Baldwin Project, Valerie's Living Book List, my friends at Reshelving Alexandria, William Kirkpatrick's Books That Build Character, Jenny Phillips' Good and Beautiful Book List, and Jan Bloom's Who Should We Then Read volumes, and many others along the way. Not every book they recommended went into my library, but I paid particular attention to titles and authors that came up repeatedly and made sure to place them in in the library. I wanted to be sure and include books for all reading levels and books that would appeal to different interests and then try to organize it in a way that you can find just what you're looking for. There were no copies of these books to read online, these 
um, books written after 1923, so I provided links to Amazon in the beginning where you could almost always find a used copy. But then I watched something sad happen along the way. These wonderful older children's books have become the hottest selling item in today's book selling market. Titles that I used to be able to pick up for a dollar or two now sell for fifty, a hundred, even two hundred dollars and more if you can even find them. How can I recommend a book to you if you have no way to read it? Can you imagine how excited I was when I learned that Internet Archive has recently started digitizing these out of print but still in copyright books and making them available for us to borrow? While you sometimes have to join a wait list and wait, it makes it possible for you to read books you cannot read otherwise. As interest grows, the availability of these titles will undoubtedly grow as well. I've been busy linking hundreds and hundreds of these hard-to-come-by titles into the library. When you enter the library, you will have a choice of accessing the books through categories or a rotation schedule. You can easily access either in the menu bar. If you choose categories, you'll find the books are sorted according to American history by chronological order, stories of nations and regions arranged alphabetically, biographies by types of stories such as great scientists or great artists and so forth, nature, and a miscellaneous other category. You will also see the topics of the Mother's University arranged alphabetical. It's a way to find what you are looking for very quickly. The rotation access is for those of you who want to follow a rotation schedule as explained in Section 5 of the introductory course in the Well-Educated Hearts section. This rotation schedule makes it possible for your family to study the whole world together, adapting it to the ages and interests of individual family members. Understanding layers in year after year and can go on indefinitely. It's a lot of fun. If you select a country or American history topic, it will take you to what I call a landing page. It gives you ideas of things you may want to study that month, and I highlight a few books, just like all good librarians do. You can see that um, I post my podcasts here that tie into that particular study to awaken interest in a variety of topics. You will also notice an option to print out a book list for all the books related to that topic, which gives you a quick reference. The Enrichment button will take you to a page that has craft and food ideas, plays, movies, fine art, and classical music. Many of the art and music selections have stories attached to them so that you have a quick music or art appreciation lesson you can draw from. I give you ideas for making the most of these resources in Section 5 of the intro class. Now for the books. They are sorted by elementary, middle school, and high school. All the library pages have these four buttons at the top so that you um, have easy access to them. Just click where you want to go. These categories don't necessarily mean reading level. It's a general guideline. A high schooler may find many engaging and satisfying books in the elementary level, but an elementary age student is not likely to like the complexity of the high school books. And just because it's in elementary doesn't mean an elementary student may be able to read it on its own. It's there because the subject matter is appealing to a younger mind and can be used as a read aloud. The best thing to do is to do what you do in a library. Take a book off the shelf, open it up, and read a few paragraphs and see if it's a good fit for your child. And if not, put it back and keep looking. Each page is then broken down into subcategories, such as picture books, beginner readers, imaginative, epic and legendary heroes, cultural, history, fiction, historical fiction, classic literature, and biographies. Let me walk you through the symbols and colors you'll see on the page. These are the icons that you're going to click on that are going to take you to the books themselves. The red arrow that looks like a play button links you to an audio version of the book. These are free audios with the exception of the Jim Weiss audios, which are noted, although you may be able to find them in your local library. 
A heart leads you to books that can be read immediately online. They have a heart because we love these books. Most of them have beautiful, rich language, and you'll probably want to begin to use them as read-alouds until your children are more comfortable with the language. These books are in the public domain and can be printed out if you want to. A diamond leads you to the borrowed books on Internet Archive. They have a diamond because they are often like rare jewels and you may have to wait to read them. You can only keep them for two weeks and they may not be printed out. It's an imperfect system, but without it there would be no hope of reading many of these books. A dollar sign leads you to where a copy of the book may be purchased. Most of them link to Amazon, but there are other places as well. It gives you a place to um, learn more about the book and to read what other people say about the book. The dollar sign is also usually associated with books that may be available through your public library, either in stock or through interlibrary loans, so check it out there. If all these choices are overwhelming to begin with, you may want to focus on the colored blocks sections at first, especially if you are someone who wants a book in hand. The blue section refers to the Forgotten Classics Family Library. These are the books I originally compiled from pre-1923 children's stories. When I created this story, the tablet had not yet been invented, and I couldn't picture moms gathering their kids around the desktop computer. So I searched for favorites to reprint and to make available to purchase as, hot, as hard copies. But I've also provided free digital copies you can read online. It's like a Harvard Classics for children. The challenge I gave myself was how much could I fit into five feet of books that would provide a well-rounded education. If you enter Forgotten Classics Family Library in the search field at the bottom of the page, you can access the whole library, or you can also find it listed in the other category. The peach sections refer to selections from the 1971 edition of My Book House. While there is a copy online, you'll probably be on a wait list forever. My recommendation is, if you want to purchase a set of books that you'll get a lot of mileage from, look for a used set of these books on eBay or other booksellers. They're very, very worthwhile. The purple sections refer you to selections from Grolier's 1962 edition of Junior Classics. This image is of the deluxe version, so the set you find may look different, but the insides are the same. This set will also give you a lot of mileage, and they have not been too hard to come by. Buy both My Book House and Junior Classics if you can, or start with just one set. The yellow sections refer you to the Delphian course readings you will learn about in the Mother's Training. There's a lot to explore when you get inside the library. I hope it won't overwhelm you. Notice at the bottom of each page is a search field. If you're out and about and come across a book and want to know if it's one of the books in the library, you can quickly find out by entering the title and author in the search field. If you are saying to yourself, well, this is all fine and wonderful, but my kids aren't going to read books like that, then I encourage you to visit the Well-Educated Heart site of this website, if you haven't already. You will learn all about the tools to begin to open up their hearts, and you can access it here in the menu bar. So you may be wondering how much it costs to use this library. Libraries of Hope is a labor of love. I charge nothing to use the library or any of its resources, but there are ways you can help. Your kind financial contributions serve to help move the work forward and are deeply appreciated. But if you aren't able to contribute in that way, you can help move the work forward simply by sharing these resources with family and friends. Build your family library and share your books. The more families that are involved, the greater the influence. But the greatest contribution you will make is every story or poem or work of fine art or music you plant in the heart of the next generation. I truly hope you will take full advantage of all the resources that have been gathered for you and your family. Don't tiptoe around. Dive in. We're living in extraordinary times. It is the best of times and the worst of times. As is said, as childhood goes, so goes the world. Within your homes and within your children's hearts are the solutions to a kinder, more beautiful world. We each have a part to play. I happen to love books and stories and all things pertaining to the heart. I love my work here with Libraries of Hope. 
I hope these efforts can be a blessing to you and your family. Thanks for stopping by.